about Glasgow Coma Scale, GCS. The GCS measures arousal and awareness by assessing three different areas of the patient's behavior. Eye opening, verbal response, motor response, Dawes and Durham, 2007. Glasgow Coma Scale Assessment Tool was first developed by Teasdale and Jennett, 1974. It is widely accepted as the definitive measure of conscious level during the acute phase of brain injury and is used to assess all patients with a head injury. It is used to assess all patients with head injuries in UK healthcare settings. Using the GCS sheet. The GCS measures arousal and awareness by assessing three different areas of the patient's behavior. Eye opening, verbal response and motor response. Dawes and Durham 2007. Each area is allocated a score, enabling objectivity, ease of recording and comparison between recordings. The total sum provides a score out of 15, whereby a score of 15 indicates a fully alert and responsive patient. A score of 3, the lowest possible score, indicates unconsciousness. Dawes and Durham, 2007. When used consistently, the GCS provides a graphical representation that shows any improvement or deterioration of the patient's conscious levels at a glance. Charted on a GCS graph, a change in the patient's condition is easily identified and leads to accuracy in monitoring altered levels of consciousness, mostly due to cerebral trauma rather than those caused by medical conditions. Glasgow Coma Scale Explained The Glasgow Coma Scale GCS is a reliable and universally comparable way of recording the conscious state of a person. Three types of response are measured and added together to give an overall score. The lower the score, the lower the patient's conscious state. The GCS is used to help predict the progression of a person's condition. The three responses measured are best motor response, maximum score of 6, best verbal response, maximum score of 5, eye opening, maximum score of 4. The lowest score for each category is 1, therefore the lowest overall score is 3, no response to pain plus no verbalization plus no eye opening. A GCS of 8 or less indicates severe injury, one of 9 to 12 moderate injury and a GCS score of 13 to 15 is obtained when the injury is minor. The GCS scoring is obtained from this part of the chart. Note, they must be able to follow commands such as stick your tongue out. Eye opening. This is a great indicator of differences in arousal mechanism and reflects control of the eyes within the brainstem. Spontaneous eye opening only shows that arousal mechanisms in the brainstem are active. It does not indicate patient awareness. The Royal Marsden Manual of Clinical Nursing Procedures states, Verbal response. Areas of cerebral functioning that are tested are understanding and transmission of sensory input and the ability to give an appropriate verbal reply. Showing orientation is favorable as it reflects a high degree of integration within the nervous system. The Royal Marsden Manual of Clinical Nursing Procedures states, Evaluation of verbal response. Oriented. The patient can correctly identify who they are person, where they are, place, and the current year, time. Allocated a score of 5. Confused. 
the person's responses to the above questions are incorrect and they are unaware of person, place or time. Allocated a score of 4. Inappropriate words. The person responds using intelligible words which are unsuitable as conversational responses. Swearing is common as a single word responses. Allocated a score of 3. Incomprehensible. The patient may mumble, moan or groan without recognizable words. Allocated a score of 2. Absent. The person does not speak or make sounds at all. Allocated a score of 1. Farley et al. 2005. Farley and Pierce 2006. Waterhouse 2005. Best motor response. The patient should be able to stick their tongue out or raise their eyebrows when asked and so obeys commands. Pupillary response. Transmission of light impulses from the light involving the optic nerve and the oculometer nerve checks impulses sent from the retina to the midbrain and to the papillary musculature. A dilated pupil can indicate an expanding lesion on the same side of the brain. Pupils that are bilaterally fixed and dilated, where motor response presents as flexion or localizing, indicates a recent seizure. Assessing direct light response. As a bright pen torch is moved across from the outer aspect of the eye over the pupil, it should constrict briskly. Best to make the environment dark if possible. It is easier to assess the change in size and speed of contraction or hold your hand over the eyes to shade the light. When removing the light, the pupil should return to its original size. The contraction and dilation of the pupil is direct light response. Both eyes should be tested together one after the other. Limb responses. When a marked difference is noted in responsiveness in a limb in comparison to the other, focal brain damage is indicated. Hemiparesis or hemiplegia shows in the limbs on the opposite side to the lesion. Although limbs on the same side of the lesion may be affected in the case of pressure on the contralateral hemisphere. Assessing arm responses. Holding the wrist, ask the patient to pull their arm towards their shoulder against resistance. You resist their pull or hold your hand flat against theirs and ask them to push against you as you resist and they should also resist your push. Then they push your hand away while you resist them. A weakness shows if they cannot resist your pressure. Mild weakness in one arm With their arms raised above their head and eyes closed they should be able to keep their arms in the air. In the case of a mild weakness in one arm, a drift will show as the arm slowly moves downwards. Assessing Leg Responses By raising their leg off the bed, holding it there and the nurse pushing it back down to the bed, a mild weakness can be detected through lack of resistance. Severe weakness is indicated if they are able to move some leg muscles but not able to raise it against gravity. When a downward pressure is applied to their ankle, they should raise their leg. It should be difficult for the nurse to overcome the patient's movement, depending on the patient's original ability. All these findings put together give a good overall picture of the patient's neurological status.